Okay, Miss Quills, you gotta make a decision over here. So which one do you want? Oh, well, let's see. My rare dealer is black and yours is silver. Looks like it has more silver on it. So maybe this one would go with yours? The silver okay. one? So you want this one? I'm gonna put this on real quick here before this ride today. Um, and then this is going over here. We'll talk about that later. This is a Shimano 11 speed. And this is a 10 speed. Wow, for some right out of the box. Guess the high the guess we could come up just a touch. Wow, that's just so good. That looks pretty good. Yeah, the one thing that's different about these ten, the ten-speed cages, is the uh, the shape of the cage is not as it doesn't match the shape of the chainring as well as the eleven-speed cage does. I think here's here's the eleven-speed. Eh, I guess it's about the same. This is maybe a little bit more curved, but ah, it's fine. No one's gonna notice. The main thing is when it's on the big ring, this is the part of the derailleur up here that does the shifting. This part really doesn't do a whole lot. So we'll have to do a, a pull lever test, a lever pull test. Okay. So you can see which one you think is better. All right, hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Henry Wildberry, this is Miss Cools. Morning. And uh, I am ready to start building my new custom dirt touring all-terrain bike. And uh, a lot of you that have been following along are probably wondering what the huge delay was all about. And the, the main delay was actually the rims. The 27.5 uh, rims in rim brake, you'd be surprised, uh, were pretty hard to get a hold of. And I finally got a set of rims, so now I can start building up the wheels. But that, that was kind of the big holdup. And then also I've been working through the build as well, like the components I'm gonna use and uh, all the accessories, that sort of thing. So that's what we're gonna be going through here on this video and possibly some future videos. 
I don't know if we'll get through the whole thing in one. Probably not. There's a lot to talk about, but we're going to try. We're going to cover some stuff today. I've already got the uh, headset put in and started messing around with some handlebar options. And that really kind of unfolded into just a whole rabbit hole worth of options and challenges and different things I want to try on this bike. So this bike is going to be a little bit more specific in what it's going to do compared to some of the other bikes I've built. So we're going to roll over to the coffee shop and uh, maybe start discussing the first topic and then uh, we'll come back and we'll see where we can go on this video today. So Ms. Coles, I got to have you try this front derailleur because I want you to feel the difference in the pull lever, the, the lever ratio. So Miss Cools has the 11 speed front derailleur on her bike. I have the 10 speed now, so we can kind of feel the difference. Yeah. Okay, so we'll have to do a pull lever test. How does that sound? Okay. Let's do it. Okay, let's do the switch yeah. over here. And I, and I get to ride your bike, so I get to see. Yeah. Get to see what it's like switching back and forth. Okay. Whoa. Is it easier? Maybe go a little bit faster. Easier? It feels, um, it doesn't feel as tight. Okay. And you can feel, you can feel, does the, does the distance that the lever travels, is it longer? It should be. Yeah, because I the, think it is. It does feel like it's a little longer to pull. Yeah. But it feels, doesn't feel quite as tight. Okay, good. Yeah, I want to check that. When we get to the coffee shop, I want to look at the levers and see if they're in a different position. Okay. That should tell us if there's a little bit more lever pull. There should be more lever pull, I think. Okay, let me try yours here. Oh, oh yeah, it is very tight. Okay, let's see if I can do it no-handed. Wow. Yeah. You definitely feel it more. It's definitely a harder lever pull. Oh yeah, way easier. Definitely easier. All right, let's get your impressions now that you're back on that bike. What do you think? Yeah, it feels a little, uh, little tighter, but yeah, it does feel like a shorter pull, but a little tighter. Okay, well, let's see. Is there any way we can figure out if they're the if they're different or not? If you look at mine and you look at the head tube angle, it looks like the lever is almost parallel with the head tube and it's in the big ring. Let's go look at yours. Oh yeah, you can definitely see a difference here. See the head tube? Yeah. And the angle of your lever? It's, it's a lot steeper or, you know, it's not parallel oh, yeah. at all. And you're also in the big ring. So there is a difference in the cable pull. Now our head tubes, what, uh, the angles of the head tubes about the same? Yeah, they are. They are. Very similar. So our, um, 
yeah, I forget what the angle of each of our head tubes are, but they are about the same. So, yeah. There you go. There you go. There you have it. Scientifically proven. If you look at, say, 11 speed, 12 speed Shimano mountain bike, the pull ratios on the rear derailleurs are completely different than what they were on the older six, seven, eight, and even nine speed stuff. And those silver shifters that we're using, the ones on, uh, on our bikes, they were designed, uh, they're, they're a new design, but they are kind of based on the older standards. And so they don't pull a, enough cable. So if you look at like a mountain bike, let's say, let's do like an 11 speed mountain bike XT. The cable pull ratio for the rear, and we can verify this, this is just a guess, is like 1.1. But our mountain bike nine speed derailleurs is like 1.4. So for every unit of cable, the derailleur will articulate 1.4 times that. And, but an 11 speed will articulate say 1.1 times that so you can see it's a lot less movement so you need more cable to actuate that rear derailleur and so that's why when i when i'm the reason why i wanted to go back to 10 speed on our front is because it will articulate less for each uh, unit of cable so that gives us a better lever feel when we're pulling the lever it makes it e feel easier but we have to pull it longer but it feels easier yeah, and that makes sense. Yeah, and because it's a retro friction uh, lever, it has like a ratchet system inside. And so the amount of cable that will move for each click of the ratchet is better matched to the older standards than the newer standards. Because if it doesn't, if like for example, on our 11 speed front derailleurs, it doesn't take much cable and it moves all the way over, which means the cable is under higher tension uh -huh. all the time which is harder for the, ra the ratchet to hold it, first of all. It wears out the cable faster because there's more tension. Yeah. Because, you know, it's going down, it has to go under the bottom bracket. So there's a lot more tension and therefore more friction. So it's going to wear the cables out faster, which is why your cable is now fraying and it, it's not that old. So it's causing some accelerated wear on the cables. And for each click, it moves the derailleur too much. So you can't fine tune your derailleur cage position as well as you can with the older stuff. So anyway, that's a long discussion about all this. And because of that, um, I've had to make a uh, Henry Wildberry executive decision. There's no way I'm going to be able to make this all in one video. So we're going to break this up and we are going to be talking mostly about my new bike that I'm building. Um, but I wanted to talk about this because I think it's, it's relevant and it's important. Yeah, because we'll be you'll be exper experimenting with um, different shifters on your new bike too. So that it matters how much it pulls. I think. Yeah, all yeah. of this is going to come back. It'll all make sense by the end. Uh, you know why we're talking about this, but we're uh, we're definitely getting into the the weeds a little bit with this bike build, and I yeah. want to share a lot of it. I want to talk about you know how I'm going through this, and you know I want to bring everyone along because it's fun and it's interesting and you know we'll see where it goes i have no idea i don't know if any of this is going to work yeah we're, we're so. just yeah it's going to be interesting it's going to be fun yeah now somebody out there is probably going to say well you know why don't you just you know why do it this way just just get a 12 speed group set you know and just go with that you know why not just do that i mean that's it's a, a good fair question. question yeah fair question that's a good question and i think that is the path of least resistance i think if you want to just get something that you know works, then just get the latest group set and put it all together and it'll work. Um, but for me, and just the way I like to do things, I just like to experiment. I like to make, make it my own. Uh -huh. you know? I, like to, I like the challenge. Can I make a nine speed work with a 12 speed? Or, you know, can I do that? Is it possible? What's it like? What are the, you know, what does it end up being like in, re in real life? And, uh, you know, it's fun. Yeah. So we made a little progress today here. This is, this is not the wheel I'm going to be using, but just to get an idea here. Actually, you know, I've got a couple of ideas for this bike build. Uh, I've got 
this drop bar on here right now, this was just because I was curious what it would look like with a drop bar. I would not be using this particular drop bar. If I do a drop bar, which I will for my bike touring setup, I'm going to go with a little bit wider bar with, with some flare. Um, but for fun, I decided it might be kind of fun to try out this flat bar I picked up. Uh, this is a Nitto, I forgot which model it is. It's the uh, B840, so it's got about, I think, a 30, 25 or 30 millimeters of rise here. And, of course, here's the other thing we need to do. We've got a set of wheels to build in order to get this ATB off the ground. So that's the next thing I'm going to do in the next video, so stay tuned.